This short tutorial is going to be about hydrologic modeling. Once you obtain a HydroCAD license, now you have installed HydroCAD and you have access to different node capacities, you want to do watershed modeling. To do that, first you need to define your project. So you're going to click on the project and open a project. Well, obviously we don't have a project right now, but we want to create one. So we can, I'm going to call my first project number one because this is tutorial number one and watershed modeling open and yes i want to create a new project so now you can see some of these buttons and bars are activated over here i'm going to talk about all of these as we go on through this tutorial series all right but in order to do watershed modeling we need to have a watershed or a sub basin so when you take a look at this green button over here it says sub catchment i'm going to drag the subcatchment into the white screen over here and this would be one subbasin subbasin one or subcatchment one right if you right click on it you can edit that and change the name of this node or subcatchment into whatever you want to i'm going to change it to subbasin one and click ok ok so now i have subbasin one um, there are lots of things that you need to define for this subbasin, like area time of concentration so on and so forth but first of all we need to realize what is the method that hydrocat is using for calculating surface runoff take a look at this calculator over here this is called calculation settings when you click on that it will tell you that the runoff method that hydrocat is using right now is scs curve number method based on the technical report 20 a procedure right you can change that to rational method if you want to or you can keep it as SES curve number so that depends on what method you want to use to model the runoff in your sub basin I'm going to keep it as SES curve number method okay so now I'm going to right click on my sub basin and click on edit this will allow me to define this watershed so first of all again we have a name for it then I'm going to go over area the area, you can see that the units for area are in acres. What if you want to change the units? Let's close this. If you want to change the units of input and output, you can simply go to this vertical ribbon over here and click on set measurement units and change the units from English to metric and so on and so forth. For this specific um, problem i'm going to keep the units as english all right let's right click on sub basin and, and edit go back to the area i am going to consider that i have one acre of maybe residential areas so now i need to find the curve number for this if you remember in order to find curve number you need to go to the nrcs manuals or tr20 manuals and find the value of curve number based on land use uh, hydrologic condition and soil type right but the good thing about hydrocat is if you double click over here this is going to open the uh, curve number table for you so what you need to do over here is just go through all of these and find what you want over here okay so take a look at this we have I said that I want to consider a residential district and I, my area is one acre. I'm going to consider 20% impervious, okay? And then if you go up here, you can see the soil types, soil uh, hydro groups, A, B, C, D. I am going to consider the hydro group, soil hydro group of type C. So it would be right over here. So when you click on it, when you double click on it, it will automatically choose as that curve number for you and it gives you a description. If you want to edit the description, you can always add to this description to make it more descriptive. What if you have several areas? I'm going to talk about this in the next section of this video. Right now, let's say that we know that we have a residential area, one acre, and curve number is 79, and that would be it. Next, we need to talk about time of concentration. Again, there are different methods to calculate time of concentration. And what is time of concentration? Time of concentration is the time that it takes uh, for a drop of water to travel from the furthest, hydraulically furthest point of the watershed to the outlet of the watershed. So this is the physical minute, meaning of time of concentration 
and it is uh, you need to put it in minutes but if you know the time of concentration so if you double click over here you will see that there are different methodologies for calculating time of concentration if you know time of concentration you can click on direct entry and then add a description that this is the value that I have based on this report or that report or someone told me and then input the value of time of concentration in my case it's going to be uh, 12 minutes okay if you know the length of the length that water travels and the velocity that's good if you don't know it it's optional you don't have to input it over here and I'm going to click on OK you're going to ask me what if I want to use a method different methodology for time of concentration and that would be the topic for the uh, next section of this video okay so my total time of concentration is uh, 12 minutes and now that I have this I can go to the notes and if I want to add a note a summary to this which will be added to the summary report I can put it over here all right then I'm gonna click over here and now if I right click and then edit you will see that all the information that I input is saved over here perfect so the watershed parameters characteristics are there now we need a rainfall that rainfall is going to fall in on this watershed and it's going to create a hydrograph and we are going to see the hydrograph at the outlet of the watershed but how do we create that rainfall so if you want to create a rainfall we need to go over calculation settings I'm going to click on calculation settings and there's a tab called rainfall in this rainfall you can define your rainfall depth over here and normally rainfall depth is defined based on NOAA Atlas 14 so you can define a depth for a specific return period and duration another thing that you can do actually you can import different rainfall events over here but for this part of the video we want to keep it as simple as possible in the next sections of this video we're going to add to it so let's call the depth let's actually say that the depth of rainfall that we are going to receive is going to be 2.5 inches okay so this is the total depth of rainfall but we want our rainfall to be distributed over time a very common distribution that water resources engineers use is type 2 24 hour distribution well type 2 refers to the location that you are in because i know i am in the united states and the midwest so i need to use type 2 if you're in different areas you might need to use type 3 or type 1 if you instead of having 24 hour uh, distribution you want 12 hour or 6 hour you can change these as well okay and then if you want to rescale this let's say if you want a two hour rainfall you can click here and click on scale and then change this 24 hours to two hour okay but right now i want to go with the default okay you also have the option of having back-to-back -back storm let's say instead of one rainfall I want to have two rainfalls so you can change this to two it will be two back-to-back -back rainfall events and AMC is the antecedent moisture content, uh, uh, content so two and AMC is the antecedent moisture content of the soil two means that we have the average condition is not dry and is not wet you can change it to one and three depending on if your condition is dry or wet if the antecedent condition of the soil is dry or wet again I'm going to keep it as the average condition perfect now we define our rainfall next tab is the time span this is how we want our hydrograph to be modeled currently by default it's from 5 to 20 okay um, we can change it later but for now I'm gonna keep it like this and the calculation time intervals right now is 0 0.05 hours you can um, tell hydrocat what in the report what should be included and what what should not be included next tab is about the unit hydrograph the unit hydrograph is a way that you can convert the depth of rainfall excess into a hydrograph at the outlet of your watershed by default it is the SCS um, unit hydrograph method however you can change this you can change this to any other method that is available over here I'm going to keep it as SCS hydrograph and when you click on view you will see the SCS unit hydrograph over here okay 
Similarly, for rainfall, if you click on view storm, it will show you the 24 hour storm type 2, like this. And this is the value, incremental value for a fraction of rainfall depth. Perfect. And then there, are, there is advanced that you can set a minimum time of concentration that I will be talking about. And this is the initial abstraction coefficient, which essentially is telling you right now the initial abstraction, which is initial infiltration, depression, storage, and also interception is only 20% of capital S or the maximum watershed storage. I'm going to keep it as 20%. But note that in some references, this value could be 5% or 10%. So you are, you can change this value too. All right. So I have set the rainfall and all the other variables correctly. I'm going to click OK. Now the watershed is ready. Actually, let's go back here and go back to rainfall. The depth is over here. You can name this depth as well. I'm going to name this depth as scenario one, S1. Okay. So, and then click on save. So when you save it, when you click on view all, you can see the scenario that I have created over here. Let's create another scenario. Let's say that I want to have the depth of uh, this time five inches, and this would be my scenario number two, and I'm going to save it. So when you click on view all, you have two scenarios created. One has the depth of 2.5, the other one twice that, five inches. Okay, and now let's click OK. Now you will see over here, you can switch between two different scenarios that you have. I'm going to click on scenario one. And now if you double click on this sub basin, you will see that the model automatically is going to create a hydrograph for you. So the hydrologic modeling is done and it has created this hydrograph for you. The hydrograph is over, over here. And right now you are seeing a 3D version of this. If you want to see a 2D hydrograph, you can click on 2D and it will give you the 2D hydrograph, which has the peak of 1.6 CFS. All right, and it gives you some general information about your watershed and the runoff generated over here. Okay, you can also see this hydrograph in form of a table. Right now, you can see that the table is um, every half an hour, right? What if, but if you remember the calculate, the time, uh, the time uh, stamp was not half an hour. That's why, because the shrink button is on. If I turn this off, now you can see that the time span is different for unit hydrograph. Okay. This is just to save some time. And now if you take a look at the values over here, you will see that there are some values that are written essentially um, in bold like this. Let me scroll down again. These bold values, these represents the maximum or peak value. So if I want to show you this, is, if I click on the hydrograph and then I want to show this, this would be the peak value of the hydrograph that was written in bold in the table that I had. Okay, and obviously you can export this table into um, different folders that you have. And if you want to change something, you can click on edit and you can change the area, the curve number, the time of concentration. Let's say that we want to change the curve number, double click on it. And instead of having a hydrologic soil group of C, I'm going to have the hydrologic soil group of D. I'm going to double click on that. This is changed. I'm going to click apply. And you can see that as I clicked apply, this number changed. Perfect. And the curve number obviously has changed too. Okay. The other thing that you need to be careful when you're doing your simulations it are the messages that you get. So the messages that you let me reorient over here. Sometimes you will see that um, this message box goes away. So if this goes away, you can click on this view all and the message box will show again. Okay. There are notes, everything that is in green, there are just notes to you and it's okay. Hints are in yellow and warnings are in red. You do not want to have warnings. Hints are just trying to help you, give you hints to make your simulation better. Or maybe visualization. For example, take a look at this hints number 37. It says longer time span advised for full volumes. What does that mean? Take a look at the hydrograph over here. You can see that at the end of the hydrograph, when the hour at hour 20, the hydrograph does not have the value of zero. 
So I want to zoom in. If you want to zoom in, you just need to create a box over here from like this. So this is the zoom there. Admin at uh, 20 hours, the value of hydrograph is not zero, right? And that's the error over here. It advises us to increase the hydrograph duration. So I'm going to create a box at the opposite direction coming from the right bottom corner to, to zoom out over here. Okay, now let's uh, close this. And I'm going to click on this calculation settings. Right now in the time span, you can see that my time span is from hour 5 to hour 20. I'm going to change this to hour 24. Okay. And then click apply and okay. And then double click on the sub basin. Now you can see that it still gives us that hint because if I make it 2D and zoom in here, Again, still, it's very close to zero, but it's not zero. So let's do this again. Zoom back, close this, go into calculation, time span. I'm going to change it to 30 this time. And then apply on OK. Double click on your sub basin. Perfect. Right now, you can see the hint went away. And the hydrograph is equal to zero after this point over here that I'm going to zoom in. There we go. You can see that it hits zero at this point. Perfect. Okay. So now at any point, if you want to learn more about any of these warnings or hints or notes, you can click on these and it will open up for you the document for HydroCAD that talks about that specific note that you wanted to learn more about. Okay. I'm going to close that. So this was your first tutorial, very simple tutorial of uh, how to use HydroCAD for watershed modeling. Now, in the next tutorial, we are going to make this a little bit more complicated. What if we have multiple storms? And what if we have um, different values of curve number within the watershed and so on and so forth and do a little bit more complex watershed modeling?